Mike Maples and Peter Zebelman. Pattern Breakers. Why Some Startups Change the Future. Have you ever wondered what distinguishes truly revolutionary innovations from the rest? What inspires visionaries to question accepted norms and create something extraordinary? Think for a moment about your own experiences with innovation and how you tackle problems in your everyday life. Do you typically follow established patterns? Or do you find yourself challenging conventional wisdom? In this blink, you'll get a glimpse into the subtle interplay between recognizing patterns and breaking them in the pursuit of innovation. You'll explore how our natural talent for identifying patterns can occasionally stifle groundbreaking ideas and discover tactics to overcome this limitation. By grasping these concepts, you'll be better prepared to nurture creativity, spark meaningful change, and potentially develop transformative innovations in your chosen field or personal pursuits. Let's get started. Routine habits drive our social fabric. We humans are pattern-matching wizards. Our daily lives unfold in a haze of habits and routines, from the way we greet the morning sun to how we unwind as twilight falls. These patterns don't stop at our doorstep, though. They weave through our communities, oiling the gears of social interaction and weaving us into the fabric of society. In the corporate world, this pattern-matching instinct crystallizes into what are known as best practices— these are the go-to playbook for success in various domains. They're past trends that big-shot executives pour over to crystal ball the future. It's when hiring managers size up candidates based on their track record. Even the financial reports of public companies march to the beat of generally accepted accounting principles. This pattern-matching behavior isn't just a quirk. It's baked into our neural wiring— our brains crave order, predictability, and safety in a world that often feels like a chaotic whirlwind. By tapping into our reservoir of experiences and knowledge, we can make sense of new information more swiftly, greasing the wheels of decision-making. On the one hand, this knack helps us navigate life's twists and turns. But on the other, it's also a secret sauce for academic prowess, social standing, and potentially even a longer, more fulfilling life. Here's the rub, though. The same talent for spotting patterns can be a roadblock to groundbreaking innovation. True breakthroughs often demand that we color outside the lines, a skill that many find as comfortable as a pair of shoes on the wrong feet. Let's take a trip back in time to the dawn of human flight. In 1901, the top brass at the U.S. Navy dismissed flying machines as a pipe dream. Fast forward two years, and the New York Times was betting it would take eons, maybe even millions of years, before humans could take to the skies. But the Wright brothers didn't get the memo. A mere 69 days after that gloomy forecast, they were soaring over Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Orville and Wilbur Wright weren't your typical aviation pioneers. They didn't have fancy degrees in physics or aeronautics. Instead, they ran a humble bicycle shop in Dayton, Ohio. But they had something special, a blend of free-thinking spirit and an eclectic mix of life experiences that often spark revolutionary ideas. Their deep understanding of bicycle balance and steering became the secret ingredient in their recipe for flight. So, what can you learn from this as a budding innovator or entrepreneur? First off, recognize that while your knack for pattern spotting is a superpower in many situations, it might be your kryptonite when it comes to spotting breakthrough opportunities. Push yourself to peek beyond the usual suspects in your field. Next, become a collector of diverse experiences and skills. The Wright Brothers' eureka moment came from connecting the dots between bicycles and flying machines, two worlds that seemed galaxies apart. How can you bridge the gap between different corners of your life or expertise? Lastly, slip into the shoes of a pattern breaker. Don't shy away from ideas that seem off the wall or pie in the sky at first glance. Remember, the next big leap forward 
often comes from those bold enough to challenge the way things have always been done and paint a picture of a different tomorrow. Here's a little mental exercise to flex your pattern-breaking muscles. Pick a thorny problem in your industry or everyday life, one that seems like a tough nut to crack. Now, throw all constraints out the window. Money's no object. Technology knows no bounds. How would you tackle the problem with fresh eyes? What wild and wacky solutions pop into your head? By shaking off the shackles of established patterns, you might just stumble upon your own breakthrough moment. In a nutshell, while your pattern-matching superpowers serve you well in many of life's arenas, true innovation calls for you to break free from these familiar grooves. By stirring up a cocktail of diverse experiences, questioning the status quo, and embracing out-of-the-box thinking, you can transform into a bona fide pattern breaker, someone with the mojo to drive meaningful change and cook up breakthroughs that will leave their mark on the world. Timing is key to startup success. Moving now to the dynamic landscape of modern startups, you'll see that it's not just pattern breaking that's important. Impeccable timing is also paramount. Success hinges not just on innovative ideas, but on introducing them at the precise moment when the market is primed for transformation. This pivotal aspect of timing is deeply connected to what are known as market inflections, significant shifts in technology, consumer behavior, or economic conditions that birth new opportunities. To illustrate these, let's examine the extraordinary growth of companies like Twitter, Twitch, and Lyft. These weren't merely clever concepts. They were ideas that perfectly seized specific market inflections. Twitter's popularity skyrocketed as smartphones became commonplace, making constant, concise updates both feasible and desirable. Twitch capitalized on increasing internet speeds and the surging popularity of gaming culture. Lyft tapped into both the burgeoning sharing economy and the widespread adoption of GPS-enabled smartphones. Yet, recognizing these inflections isn't sufficient you must identify them and act at the optimal moment. Move prematurely, and you're ahead of your time. You've got a brilliant idea, but the market isn't prepared for it. This scenario is often called a science project. In other words, it's intriguing, but not yet commercially viable. Move too late, and you're entering a saturated field where your idea no longer stands out. So, what's to be done here? How can you apply this knowledge to your own startup venture? Well, for starters, make sure you stay alert to emerging technologies and societal shifts. What new capabilities are becoming accessible? How are people's behaviors and expectations evolving? These are the seeds of potential inflections. You should also consider how these changes might intersect with your industry or idea. Can you use a new technology to solve an existing problem in a revolutionary way? Or perhaps a shifting social trend creates an entirely new market? Once you've spotted a potential inflection, assess your timing. Are the necessary supporting technologies in place? Is there evidence that consumers are ready for this change? If you're too early, can you afford to wait and refine your idea further? If you're late to the party, do you have a unique angle that distinguishes you from existing players? Bear in mind that timing isn't solely about being first. It's about being prepared when the market is ready. Airbnb, for instance, wasn't the first company to propose staying in someone's home instead of a hotel. But it launched just as online reviews were gaining trust. The sharing economy was taking off, and a financial crisis was making both travelers and homeowners more receptive to unconventional arrangements. At its core, successful startups don't just ride waves. They catch them at their peak. They identify inflections, grasp their implications, and position themselves to capitalize on these shifts just as they're reaching their tipping point. Master this skill and you'll be well-positioned to create a startup that doesn't just survive, 
but genuinely transforms the future. Crossing the Rubicon with Prototypes When their time comes, all startups face a pivotal moment that can determine their fate. It's called Crossing the Rubicon, and it's all about validating bold ideas before plunging into full product development. But how exactly can you test your concept without exhausting your resources? The solution lies in implementation prototypes. Implementation prototypes are your startup's ace in the hole. They're focused, streamlined versions of your product idea that let you engage potential early adopters and uncover vital insights. Unlike a minimum viable product, or MVP, which is a functioning version of your product, an implementation prototype is a simulation created to gauge interest and identify your most eager customers. For aspiring entrepreneurs, this means getting inventive and resourceful. Instead of investing months and valuable assets building a complete product, you can craft a prototype that showcases your core concept. This might be a landing page describing your product or a mock-up of your app's interface. Implementation prototypes excel at helping you validate two key aspects of your business. The strength of your idea and the existence of a customer base that desperately wants your solution. By presenting your prototype to potential users, you can swiftly determine if your concept resonates with them and if they're ready to become early adopters. Here's a real-world example to illustrate this concept. Consider Chegg, a company that transformed the textbook rental market. Facing dwindling funds and fierce competition from Facebook, Chegg's founders created a prototype called Textbook Flicks. This mock website allowed students to rent textbooks, but the transaction would conveniently crash at the final step. The goal wasn't to actually rent books, but to gauge interest and determine how much students were willing to pay. The results were enlightening. Chegg discovered not only that students were interested in renting textbooks, but also that many were willing to pay up to 75% of the book's original price for a rental. This valuable insight helped Chegg secure funding and shift its business model, leading to its rapid rise in the education technology sector. To apply this strategy to your own startup, begin by identifying your idea's core value proposition. What problem are you solving? Who are your potential early adopters? Once you've nailed down these basics, create a simple prototype that showcases this value. It doesn't need to be flawless or fully functional. It just needs to effectively communicate your concept. Then you present your prototype to potential users. Watch their reactions, collect feedback, and most importantly, look for signs of strong interest. Are they excited about your idea? Do they ask when it will be available? Are they eager to sign up for early access? These are all positive indicators that you're on to something significant. Keep in mind that the purpose of an implementation prototype isn't to build a perfect product, but to learn and refine quickly. Be ready to adjust based on the feedback you receive. You might discover that your initial target market isn't as interested as you thought, but another group is clamoring for your solution. Or perhaps you'll find that users are more excited about a feature you considered secondary. Using implementation prototypes both validates your idea and minimizes risk. Rather than investing heavily in a full product development cycle, you're testing the waters with a fraction of the resources. This approach allows you to fail quickly and cheaply if needed, or to confidently double down on your idea if it proves promising. Inspire revolution, not just product interest. Finding your first true believers is critical for startup success that transforms industries. These aren't run-of-the-mill early adopters. They're visionaries who grasp the future you're crafting. Think of them as your partners in crime, driven by a shared conviction in the world you're describing, not just by what your product can do right now. Choosing these initial believers requires care. It's about quality, not quantity. 
the right ones will spearhead your movement, guiding others toward the future you envision. The wrong ones might nudge you back into old patterns or blur your original vision. Look at Tesla's strategy with their first Roadster. Tesla wasn't trying to outdo luxury cars on typical features. Instead, it set out to prove to electric vehicle enthusiasts that building such a car and company was possible. The Roadster wasn't just a basic working model. It was a glimpse into the future. It validated the beliefs of those early customers who were ready to join Tesla's mission. To apply the same principle to your startup, make sure to zero in on those few individuals who truly get your vision. Don't fall into the trap of trying to please everyone or watering down your ideas to attract more customers or investors. Seek out those who light up at the future you're painting. When you're presenting your concept to potential customers, team members, or investors, keep in mind you're not just hawking a product or service you're inviting them to join a revolution. Structure your pitch around your transformative vision, not just your product's bells and whistles. Show them how being part of your movement can help them reach their own goals. But don't forget to brace yourself for naysayers and critics. Many won't grasp or believe in your vision initially. That's absolutely fine. In fact, it often signals you're onto something truly groundbreaking. Think about Drew Houston's experience with Dropbox. Despite initial skepticism and negative feedback, he stuck to his guns because he believed in what he was building. To put all this into practice, start by clearly defining your vision and the problem you're tackling. Then, sketch out the traits of your ideal early believers. Who are the people who will be most fired up about the future you're creating? Where can you find them? Craft a plan to reach out to these potential allies and engage them in meaningful conversations about your shared vision. Creating a startup that reshapes industries is about igniting a movement that can redefine the future. Your first true believers are the spark that will set everything in motion. They're not just early adopters. They're the co-architects of your vision. By finding these kindred spirits, inspiring them with your bold ideas, and collaborating closely, you lay the foundation for something truly revolutionary.